This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter, and this is ObsessiveViewer.com's The Obsessive Viewer Podcast. And welcome to The Obsessive Viewer, we're a movie and TV podcast that covers a specific topic via genre, trope, movie, or show each episode. You can find more of our work at ObsessiveViewer.com, more of our podcasts at ObsessiveViewer.com slash podcasts, and you can also like us on Facebook and join the Facebook group at Facebook.com slash The Obsessive Viewer. I'm your host, the aforementioned Matt Hurt, and with me today is recurring co-host, Woo! I like that. Yes. Who can be found on Twitter at R.A. Fekus and on Instagram and Snapchat at Nerdster330. Let's be honest. You, I don't do anything on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Well, now that you've been promoted, you should do more. I don't know. And join Letterboxd. And oh, man. Is that this all this was about? All was of it. Me to get on all Letterboxd. of it. <laughs> Uh, now, you know, just do what you want, you know, yeah, yeah. you're on the payroll, but yeah. um, <laughs> anyway, don't take that literally. I have no money to give anyone. Um, no, take that feather duster then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, speaking of, uh, money and stuff, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash obsessive viewer, and you can get access to, um, movie commentary tracks that I record as well as uh, B-roll recordings that are exclusive to Patreon uh, that we are beginning to record each time we record an episode of the podcast. So Fex and I just finished recording a, uh, a lengthy little clip about uh, him and about cop shows and uh, a bunch of other stuff. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> about boxing. How boxing. I'm inspired to become a boxer when I watch a boxing movie. Yes. And also incentive. You can hear, you can hear me recount my first fight. Yes. It was a doozy. It is. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. So go to Patreon. You can, uh, subscribe at a, the minimum rate of $1 per month and you can hear me talk about, uh, me ha- getting into a fight in the boys' bathroom. In the bathroom. boys' bathroom. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, it was Jesus. a weird 25th birthday. <laughs> it was. <laughs> hey, kitty. Okay. Um, so anyway, so today on the podcast, we're going to be reviewing, um, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Or Grindelwald. Grindelwald or Wald? I say Vault. Okay. That's why they made, that's why they Grindelwald. 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 Yes. Wonderball. Um, which I'm very excited to talk to you about because I have questions and, uh. I'm not sure I'll have answers. I know. That's what's going to make it a very interesting, yeah. uh, review. Um, but before that, we do have some, <laughs> we have some housekeeping to attend to as well as uh like one piece of news that I wanted to bring up but the housekeeping is that uh in reference to the last episode you were on I believe it was the last episode you were on um which I think was like two episodes ago but two or three it was or four I don't remember or five times at the El Royale Yeah um, I think that was like three episodes ago Yeah um if you listen to that episode Fekus, you mentioned that you uh, tried the flatbread pizza at AMC. Yes. I did that today. Did um, you enjoy it? I did. I thought it was okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, it was... Uh, what 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 type did you get? I think I got the barbecue chicken. That's... Oh, uh, I got the buffalo chicken. Okay. Yeah. Um, it was okay. It was pretty good. Yeah. It was... It was less... It was... Uh, it was better than I expected because I just expected like, oh, a microwave kind of thing. Right, it's yeah. like... A toaster. I mean, it's, it's, I, I wouldn't go to the theater just to get it, no, but you know, no. but for a, something to snack on, yeah, one better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my report on that. And then the other thing is that this is a brief thing that doesn't really need to be touched on that much, but I know that you mentioned last time that you don't really do Facebook that much anymore. I have very much gotten away from, I get on there and I post a couple mm-hmm. things, but as far as scrolling through the feed, mm-hmm. I just, I can't do it anymore. And that's fair. Um, when you were more active, did you ever notice, like, at least, and I don't know if this is, like, a nationwide thing, but, like, at least our local news, particularly one of the, it doesn't matter which one, uh, one of the local news stations here in Indianapolis, uh, they've, <laughs> they've been posting, like, 
pretty frequently just like live feeds from their affiliates or their whatever's in uh, California. Anytime there's like a police pursuit. No, I've not seen yeah, this. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird because it's like, why? Like on one hand, I'm like, why does anyone in Indianapolis care? <laughs> Um, but on the other hand, it's like, oh, a high speed car chase. <laughs> so like, I bring that up because, uh, I came home from, uh, the movie I saw today after work. And like, I sat down and I was like, you know what? I've got, I've got some time before Fekus comes over. I'm going to, I'm going to squeeze in another movie. Before I do that, I'm just going to scroll through Facebook. And it's like, oh, uh, up to three, uh, three suspects could be in this SUV. Uh, suspects from a, from a reported robbery, um, that are being leading police on a chase through downtown Los Angeles. And I'm like, Oh, all right. Casting that to my TV and, uh, gonna watch it. <laughs> so I watched for about 10 to 15 minutes until it was over, like a live feed of just news in California showing just a car chase. Um, okay. Very thrilling. Very thrilling to be honest. Uh, I've been in two car chases in the last three weeks. Nice. Had had that work out for you. Uh, we caught one. Uh, the other one, I was, he was going pretty quick, and mm. he crossed a major intersection at a red light, mm. and, and mirac- you had to obey all <laughs> traffic. <laughs> Miraculously, he he didn't hit anybody, mm-hmm. but I I stopped for the intersection to make yeah. sure I didn't hit anybody, and by the time I had cleared the intersection, uh. he had. Uh, uh, got into a, like stopped the car in a yard and, and ran. So okay. I, I didn't even see where he went, but Jeez. yeah, it was just one, it was just one of those things. Mirac- mm-hmm. Thank God he didn't hit anybody, yeah. but I had to, you know, me, ha- I have to be a, right. a little careful. Yeah. So yeah, once I cleared the intersection, he just, he, mm-hmm. he found his opening and ran. So gotcha. we knew, we know who he was, but well, that's, yeah, it's that's just, good. But, I, just, I just imagine you having to follow all traffic laws yeah, while yeah. in pursuit. S- stop. <laughs> oh, the gr- light's not green. Yet. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh the other one was the um was last Wednesday and um yep me and uh, another guy caught him as after he crashed and bailed and ran so wow yep that was a if, if you could see the mud still on my boots from that one oh, yep. nice yeah nice i uh I got complimentary coffee at work. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I, I enjoy the complimentary coffees as well. Oh, well, that's, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, uh, so anyway, I was watching this and spoiler alert, they caught the guys. Um, it was, it was, I mean, it was thrill. Like he was, it was in the afternoon in LA going through downtown LA when there's traffic and everything. Like he was going like 80 miles per hour through city streets and yeah. it was, it was, it was thrilling. I was like, yeah, it was thrilling. <laughs> yeah, I, he didn't hit anyone, thankfully, but like, he crashed into a bus stop. More often uh, than not, yeah. they they crash. Yeah, yeah. It was just it was just like that anticipation. Like I was just like watching it. Like oh my god, is like wh- wh- how's it gonna end? You it's may not, not really you, you, you may not enjoy the movie. I I personally mm-hmm. do, but Anchorman two oh. actually had a really good bit about that. Where yeah. they're like, what do we? They got the other channels got this uh, big interview. What do we do? Uh. It, look, there's there's a car chase. Throw it on there, it's and right. so they just sit there and commentate about this car chase. It ended up being some that. like old guy that had no idea. We're like, we're speculating here that he's right, <laughs> and the, that was what I was thinking of when you're telling me that you're watching car Honestly, chase from L.A. I think that that's part of the appeal to me is that I know because like there was a guy like the guy in the helicopter that was like filming it and everything for for the news station. He was going through like there was a point where I feel like. I wondered if like the people in his ear like told him to shut up yeah. <laughs> or or something because like he stopped and like it was he was silent for a little bit and then he started back up again but he's just doing like this commentary he couldn't he, like he he was trying to name the streets that they were on but he couldn't name like hardly any of them. Um, <laughs> but it was just guy, really yeah it was like it was really just weirdly fascinating to me. I like I've always been just weirdly into that kind of like live news broadcast that's like breaking news that like is all improvised or you know they're, they don't have like no script going it's like yeah. we're watching this live with you guys yeah. right now and they literally don't know how long right. they have to talk <laughs> that's you yeah. know what that's it's risky too because car chases who knows how that's gonna oh, end absolutely like it could end in a horrific crash mm-hmm. where a family dies it could end yeah. in the shootout where you have somebody shot and killed on live tv like mm-hmm. i'm honestly surprised that they broadcast that me too oh yeah and i wonder if there's like uh, i well uh i feel like they're 
by I don't know if it's by law or not, but like I think that most of them. I don't really have any evidence to back this up, but I feel like most of them would do it on a delay, so like they can. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that would work either. But yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's the housekeeping we have. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, check out RTV Six News on <laughs> on uh, Facebook because they post some. They post random car random chases car apparently. Chases. But like it's been like this was like the second or third one in the last like month that I've seen. Like it's just really random. Feed. Very. But I get it though. Like, I mean, it it's increase like people want to see that shit because, like you said, I mean, like, it's exciting. Knows? Yeah, and it's also like you know they post on social media, they get more traffic and right. stuff. So I'm sure that there's some. Normally, they don't last long. Like, oh yeah, this this one was particularly interesting because, uh, like after it ended, I went back and looked at like the the time and everything. It was like 36 minutes. 36 minutes yeah and that's like i rewound it to like the beginning and like it's that's when it started it's like, incredible like yeah. most the one i had on wednesday that was that was a long one uh but it was it was about 10 minutes okay. it feels like forever mm-hmm. when you're in it i can imagine but like i think the longest i've had is maybe 15 mm-hmm. and that's that that's that's long wow like most of the time it's like three minutes mm-hmm. you know I could just edit out this yeah. <laughs> and put it out of context. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, cool. Well, um, yeah, you've been listening to Copcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay, so before we get into the review of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, Grindelwald. Um, I do have one piece of news that I kind of want to go over. Um I didn't bring it up when Kirsten was on last week because uh, I didn't think about it. But uh, the live-action Lion King trailer, did you see that? I did. It looks How, incredible. Right? Right? Yeah. I, I, I'm i so pumped. Like, yeah. he, not only does it look incredible, mm-hmm. they cast the greatest people for this movie. Mm-hmm. Yes. Although oh, you have a... Billy Eichner, as, he's either Timon or Pumbaa. One of them. Seth Rogen is uh, Pumba. Okay, so then Timon is Billy Eichner. I just, I have just, I cannot stand him. Wait, who's Billy Eichner? I don't he, think I know him. He did the Billy on the Street things, very loud, and like his whole shtick is he's yelling, kind of like Lewis Black, but kind of. I don't. I'm not familiar yeah. with him. He was in. Did you watch Parks and Rec? No. Okay. Well, he was in one season of Parks and Rec. That's where my kind of hatred for him grew because it was like literally every time he's on screen, it's like he's just doing that one note thing where he's like is he's he, playing. Is there any guy. films? Um, you know, I actually don't know. I'm sure like bit parts and everything. He's not like a leading man or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I. That's the only um hesitation I have for the movie and like. I didn't even like um, uh, Jungle Book. Like, I, I really didn't like it. Oh, I thought Jungle Book was serviceable. Like, I didn't think it was the greatest thing ever, but I enjoyed mm-hmm. Jungle Book okay. Well, my kind of whole thing with that was that uh, my issues with it were the CGI, like, looked great in some parts, but any time it rained, it looked like just god awful to me and uh the the kid in the movie like yeah he was abysmal yeah he wasn't great and like that's like that's my one like huge gripe about the jungle book and like the lion king i don't have to worry about that right yeah so but there was a there was a uh video on i saw it on facebook but it had a frame by frame comparison uh for the live action trailer and the original trailer for the original one in 94 right and like it's it's so spot on, and I think that's why. Oh, I that's what. Yeah, that's yeah. intentional. I'm sure. Oh yeah, um, but yeah, I'm really, really excited. Yeah, uh, I. There's no doubt in my mind that that's going to oh, yeah. be incredible. Oh yeah, just oh, it's like we talk a lot about like oh childhood, like like things going back to our childhood and everything, and like. It, like every every time it's like i kind of have like some things i th- some things i do connect with like as like oh nostalgia and everything but like this seeing that trailer was one of the most like nostalgic moments i've had <laughs> yeah that um, lion king was one of those movies for me where really was like one of the first disney movies that w- 
that was like for my generation mm-hmm. almost because you know most of the Disney movies growing up they they're older older movies you know there's a couple yeah. that came out when I was little but mm-hmm. Lion King just really stood out for me because that was just that was my Disney movie so yeah. so I'm super right. excited for it it's good. we yeah. me and uh, my wife Cassie went there to go see the the play oh, of yeah? it yeah nice. back in September mm-hmm. I'm not a big play guy sure but it, it was good. Nice. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. Uh, the songs were great, and the the pageantry was really fun. Mm-hmm. So it, yeah, I don't I don't regret going to it. But nice. Yeah, uh, my friend Molly like offered me a free ticket because she works for a venue in in Indianapolis. Yeah. Um, but I was like, I don't really feel like doing it. <laughs> I, I don't feel like going. It's it, it's it was worth seeing. Like it's really in ingenious the way they have the animals uh on the stage nice. and so it, it, it was actually really good really well done I nice it. uh brief brief sidetrack i just want to ask you this in red dead redemption 2 have you come across a, a side quest or whatever uh with a with a guy that has like um like a traveling circus with animals that have escaped no okay. no okay that's but I, a fun one. I can't wait for that one now. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Okay. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I'm excited for it. I think it comes out like May next year, I think. Uh, uh yeah, it sounds right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for it. Big year for Disney next year. Yeah. You well, got Dumbo, you got Lion oh, King, yeah. you have Toy Story 4, and Jeez. I feel like there was another big animation, um, uh, coming out. Yeah, wow, because I, I can't think if... Uh, eh. And Dumbo looks really good, too. I don't know if you watched the, the trailers for that. I haven't watched the latest trailer. It, um, it looks really good. I, I'm excited for it. And it's funny, because I can remember almost nothing about Dumbo. Oh, same here. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah I feel like there's one more animated film coming out next yeah, year. Yeah, I tried looking up... Um, oh, that? Aladdin. Aladdin? Aladdin's next year. Okay. But that's well, a live action Aladdin, not uh, right. not animated. Alive. Alive. <laughs> anyway, um so uh yeah, let's get into our review. All right, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So, uh yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but hey, hey, Fantastic Beasts: The Crimes of Grindelwald. The plot description for Fantastic Beasts is the second installment of the Fantastic Beasts series, set in J.K. Rowling's Riz- Wizarding World, featuring the adventures of magizoologist uh, Newt Scamander. Like that, I didn't need to do that. Um, <laughs> okay. I would have said the magical zoologist uh, tracks down Magic Hitler. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, this is a be- this is a better plot description. In an effort to thwart Grindel- Grindelwald's plans of raising pure blood wizards to rule over all non magical beings, Albus Dumbledore. I'm going to editorialize that. Sexy Albus Dumbledore <laughs> <laughs> enlists his former student Newt Scamander, who agrees to help, unaware of the dangers that lie ahead. Lines are drawn as love and loyalty are tested, even among the truest friends. And family in an increasingly divided wizarding world. So, Fekus, you and I reviewed Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them a couple of years ago. And I actually, um, this is probably uh, a good indication of my interest level in the Fantastic Beasts uh, franchise. But instead of like going back and watching the movie, I just went back and listened to our review. <laughs> um, and I remember you liked it. More than I, I didn't, I didn't really like it that much. I really enjoyed it. Okay, the, the nice. original. I How really, has it held up over the years? Uh, I still really enjoy it. And to me, I think uh, the original Fantastic Beasts is one of the stronger like Harry Potter films in the whole franchise. Uh, like I, I it, it really hasn't dwindled for me. I, I really still enjoy it. I, like I, I think it's, in fact, I'd say it's easily better than Harry Potter one, two, and four, but. I I'll agree with you. I feel like four was. I, I feel like I really liked four, but I, I have a lot of problems. Two, I have a lot of problems with four, uh, mm-hmm. just from a basis of how much it is different from the book, right. or how much is left out from the from the book. So okay, sure. Um, yeah, I it's it's kind of just an obligation yeah. at this point. For well, me. you know, I, I'm a Harry Potter super fan. Sure. So. And me and the wife both are. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm almost guaranteed to like it regardless. Right. It's just 
a matter of how much or mm. so I, yeah, the original fantastic beast, I get a lot of enjoyment out of still. Okay. I think it's a fun movie. It expands the universe, uh, for me. And I really enjoy the concept of the magical creatures. Mm -hmm. So sure. And what were your expectations going into the crimes of Grindelwald? So I think we discussed it the first time we reviewed it, that my expectations going into the original were not high. Mm -hmm. And I came out with higher expectations now, uh, excited for the five movie franchise. Right. So I came into, uh, the crimes of Grindelwald pretty excited for this movie because I really, I like the characters. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I think Nukes Commander is great. Jacob Kowalski is a lot of fun. Uh, and I was, I'm really intrigued with Johnny Depp as Grindelwald. Mm -hmm. And I was super excited to see Jude Law as Dumbledore. Right. So I, my expectations for this movie were fairly high going in. Okay. Great. And, uh, just in broad terms, how did, how'd you feel about the movie? Very let down. <laughs> Interesting. Very, uh, in, in just broad terms, it was just, I did not love it. Yeah. I, uh, I, I mean, it's not like I was expecting much out of it. Like my expectations were just, this is the next wizarding world movie. I was excited that, uh, um, what's his face was in it. Jacob Kowalski. Cause I, I, I just like, Oh, uh, Dan, uh, uh, Dan Fogler. Fogler. Dan yeah. Fogler, yeah. I really enjoy him. Me too. Yeah. Like he's, yeah, Dan Fogler. I, I like him a lot and I like, I pretty much, I really like the grouping of Newt, Jacob, Queenie, and Tina, like yeah. from the first one. Like I like them as like a unit. I, I love that core group and I, yeah. and I still enjoyed the core group in this movie mm -hmm. too. See, I, we'll get into that in a yeah. bit, but, um, it, I don't know. I like going into it. I was, I had a weird experience watching this movie. Um, fortunately, no one disrupted the movie <laughs> experience for me. But um, watching the movie, I was simultaneously bored out of my mind for long stretches while also recognizing like, oh, this is actually moving along pretty fast. <laughs> like that, that is a weird parallel. Yeah. It's like they contradict each other, but it's like I – it was like I had no investment in what was going on. Well, I had, I didn't have as much investment as I would have liked to emotionally in the story but i was recognizing that like okay it is at least moving along so I, like while i was bored with it because i didn't have that tether to it like i didn't have like i didn't care if newt found tina i didn't care about like what that was um going into the movie i had read like stuff and we'll talk about this in spoilers but i had read stuff about like oh this this reveal and in, in uh, fantastic beast like what does it mean and stuff like that and so like i'm thinking like oh this is gonna be this is gonna be kind of cool like in my head i was like well maybe this could be like a in structure it could be like empire strikes back of fantastic beasts <laughs> um <laughs> i know yeah. but uh like they it's not like that's like a, a big twi it's a big twist in the movie but it's like that the character to which it is like tied to like the entire point of that character in the movie is like let me find this information about me and it's like it's it they, is just it should have been called fantastic beasts who the fuck is credence right <laughs> yeah. yep and then after everyone sees it it's like no seriously who yeah the fuck is credence? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like overall like i felt like there was not like for a movie for a movie franchise sub franchise prequel series whatever um called fantastic beasts i didn't feel like there was a lot of there wasn't enough like action or like even quirky beast stuff like we had the giant like cat thing i, I liked the giant cat uh dragon i did too um, but it was like it was kind of just like it appeared like a couple of times and then we're done right like they they did a good job at the start when they uh when you see uh newt's uh, menagerie Mm -hmm. at his house and so that was that was a lot of fun mm -hmm. but you, you're right there there wasn't a whole lot to go with after that the the bow truckle uh played a couple of fun little uh mm -hmm. scenes and so did the uh, niffler yeah which I'm, I, I love the niffler the niffler is amazing yeah like i, I still I, I wanted more of that like pretty much like overall like everything about this movie that i feel like i just wanted more right <laughs> out of every facet of it but niffler in particular um, 
if you go back and listen to our review from a couple years ago, I'm trying to find what episode that was, but if you go back and listen to it, I was really disappointed with the visual effects in, in the first one. Um, happy to say that like it, like this one, like looks just, yeah, the, the visual effects are amazing. Oh yeah. You know, we, we saw an IMAX and it was, it was incredible to watch. Mm. Uh, especially, especially specific scenes like the, uh, the climatic scene, mm-hmm. uh, during Grindelwald's speech. That was fantastic to watch. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there were some great set pieces. Absolutely. And, and that's kind of, uh, one of the things that, like, that reminds me of is that, or that I'm reminded of about that. Jesus. Um, <laughs> is that, um, I feel like this movie, in the grand scheme of things, like, uh, like when it was announced that J.K. Rowling was going to write five movies, and it was like it was going to be a five movie franchise. I was thinking like, okay, well, Devil's Advocate. She created seven books that all tied together incredibly well. Like it's like they're great pieces of fiction. Um, if she can transition that into the film medium with five five movies all connecting into a big sprawling expansion of the world she already created, more power to her. But, and that that's what I was hoping. Yeah. But this was just like it felt like <laughs> I felt like every time that there was a twist, it was only there for the sake of having a twist. Yeah. And it bothered the crap out of me. Because totally. it, it didn't feel organic to the story. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel organic to the universe. It just seemed like they were trying to do some some M. Night Shyamalan boom, you didn't see that coming. Absolutely. And it just did not hit for me. Yeah. And I was severely disappointed because it just it didn't seem like the cleverness that I'm used to out of her writing. It really didn't. And it, Yeah. And that's what has made that, that's what why it's so disappointing to me. Mm. And that's why like now I have to live with these twists within the canon. Right. And I don't love it. Like yeah. so, like we'll talk obviously we'll talk about these twists in the and spoilers, but mm. you know, I'm just I'm unhappy now that some of these things are part of the mm. canon for uh, the universe. Yeah, well, I'm gonna be a dick. <laughs> um, well, Weird. it's just it's a shame, right? It's a shame that one of your beloved like fandoms is being marred by prequel <laughs> uh, prequel canons, uh, prequel movies that are introducing new things to the canon. But Han Solo so, Solo was a great movie. Oh God! <laughs> um, Tiny agreed. Uh, yeah, well, what the fuck does he know? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Tiny. Um, but yeah. So anyway, uh, I feel like you hit the nail on the head when you said that it's not the cleverness you expect from Rowling, and this kind of harkens back to what I said two years ago when we reviewed uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Is that I just don't think she. I don't think her skills as a storyteller translate to the film medium. Um, it, it's it's novel, hard. Well, if, yeah. it, it's hard. It's hard for me to say that just yet because mm. now we have two. And I, I, I enjoyed the original Fantastic Beasts. Mm. And now the second outing to me, I thought was just was such a disappointment. Mm. So I, I'm not ready to say that yet. Like sure. I'll, I'll let her finish out her tenure for these five films, but that doesn't take away from me being severely let down by this movie. Right. So it's crazy to me that like from the moment that it starts from the moment that it started two years ago, theoretically, I mean, it's going to be 10 years before it's right. done. Like that's just crazy to me. Here's the, here's the big difference. in when it comes to the two different mediums, like mm-hmm. when they're translating the movies from the books, you know, she has written these intricate detailed books that, when the twists do come in the books, mm-hmm. it's not out of nowhere. You can go back and read and see, I can see where that, where those dots were connected and somebody could arguably have connected those dots. And people did that. Like yeah. people connected dots to future twists in the book series before the books were written because she laid it out that perfectly. Right. But with these films, they're not like there's no breadcrumbs that led you to these mm. twists. It's just it was just like exactly. boom. This is what happened. That ex- exactly. Instead of having breadcrumbs, like I'm thinking of like uh, I mean it's been a while since I've read the books, and and you're much more well versed on than I am. But like I remember my memory of like Chamber of Secrets and um and like Half Blood Prince. It's like 
a lot of the story is like, oh wait, who's the heir of Slytherin and who is the Half Blood Prince? Like that that was a question that was a ri- that uh, was arisen in the story throughout like most of the pages. Yeah. But it was all secondary to like interesting stuff happening. Right. And it was like informing that. Like this one is like, who is Credence or or where did Credence come from? It's like you're asking questions that I don't give a fuck about. Right. And it's it's hard to discuss the credence thing right. without spoiling because i have a lot to say on the matter but like one of the big twists they have to walk you through the entire thing and i'm talking about Lita lestrange's explanation as yeah. to why credence cannot be her her brother right like they, they keep saying this and they say it, it can't happen and then there's no real way for the viewer to mm-hmm. understand why until they say here's a flashback they literally flashback. have to hold your hand right it. and it's just yeah. uh, that's it's not fun to me that, it's mm. not clever to me that's not fun to me that i yeah it just was very un jk rolling yeah and like to your point about the lack of breadcrumbs and stuff like that, that's something that just kind of comes up and it's like, yeah. okay. And it's dismissed and then something else is introduced and we'll have to talk about it. But what did you think of like Grindelwald and all right. So performance wise, I thought everyone did a great job. I know there's a big controversy over uh, Johnny Depp uh, playing Grindelwald uh-huh. controversy aside. I think he does a great job as that character. Mm-hmm. So just take that as a, what at you will. I think he, is very, very much in the vein of Grinnevault as, you know, some, a charismatic person that is trying to lead people to his viewpoint. Like, yeah. very, mu- very much a cult leader or, you know, a dictator might be. And I think he plays it very well. Yeah. Uh, sympathetic when he needs to be sympathetic to people, harsh when he needs to be harsh, manipulative all the time. So I thought Johnny Depp does, does a very good job and with the limited screen time that he has. For a movie right. called The Crimes of Grindelwald, it's pretty much, hey, Grindelwald gets a house and then a, gives a speech later yeah. on. Yeah. And like his crime is a, escaping from prison. Right. And, and then give, and holding a rally. Yeah. So it, that notwithstanding, I think he does actually a really good job. Okay. I, I think, um, Eddie Redmayne, continues to be extremely likable as Newt's commander. Yeah. I love his performance in it. And the young Newt, man, they got the perfect kid for young they Newt, really didn't did. they? Yeah. Oh yeah. He was great. What'd you think of his brother? I like, I like that dynamic. Uh-huh. I, I like the, the older brother. You kind of look at it as the, uh, the book nerd and the jock and dynamic. Yeah. Uh, so I, I enjoyed that. You know, they're brothers. They love each other, but there's, there's issues between them. Yeah. So I, no, I, I like that, uh, dynamic. And I, I really like that scene too, where, um, what's, uh, his, his love interest? Uh, uh, Tina. Tina. When yeah. Tina, that was great. Yeah, and he was like, "That might be, the, yeah, that might be the greatest moment." I, I, I love that. That, oh, that yeah. was that was a lot of fun. That was very charming. Yeah. That and then, um, uh, uh, oh, to go back to Johnny Depp and stuff. Uh, I I liked his performance. Yeah. Um, I thought it was fine. Uh, one of the things that I liked about his characterization really is that, like, there's that one scene where again, this is and again, this is also kind of like showing us and not telling us, or like telling us and not showing us, but. Like, there's a scene where they're talking about, like, they're in, like, the house or whatever, uh, Grindelwald and, and, um, his people. Um, and they're talking about, like, going after Credence and, and stuff, or they're going after things. And then he's like, no, he needs to want to do this. Um, I just, I liked that. I, I do too. I don't have a problem with that kind of exposition because I, I, yeah, that's just the manipulate the the mani- manipulative ways of right. Grindelwald. So I, yeah, I agree. Totally agree. Um, Queenie, I love her turn. Oh, interesting. I interesting. really enjoy her we turn at the more end. In spoilers, right, but yeah, but and I, I've always I enjoyed her character in the first one. I uh-huh. continue to enjoy it in this one. And I thought Zoe Kravitz does a really good job as Lita Strange. Me too. So I, I, I like her character. I liked her a lot. To about Queenie, I like that was one thing that. For most of the movie, she's separated from, from the group and everything. And like, I just feel like I didn't care about her on her own. Like, I didn't care about the turn. I didn't care about I, her. I did because to line. me, her turn was one of the most organic turns of the whole movie. Like, you see, yeah. you see it coming and you get her reasoning. Right. So. And, and I won't dispute that. Like, like, it tracks well. Yeah. It's just, I couldn't connect with it. Like, her, uh, her outside of the group just 
I didn't feel like she was a compelling enough character. I could character see that, me. and she's definitely stronger when she's with Jake. Uh-huh. You know, th- that's a fun dynamic, and you didn't have a whole lot of that. Right. You have it at her their introduction at the start, and then uh-huh. again they don't uh, they don't come together until the end. Right. So you don't have that dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, one of the. Uh-huh. The aura that was assigned to Credence. Yeah. They, I feel like they make a big deal out of this guy and then they just, they he's pretty just much drop, n- drop him. him. He's yeah. nowhere else in the whole movie. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I, and that was I just, feel like he was at the end, but was he? I don't I think, remember him. I don't know. But nothing, there's no, like, he's like an extra. Right. <laughs> in the end. And they make this like, well, like obviously there's this tension between him and Newt uh-huh. when they introduce this aura. And then he has this big scene with Credence and Nagini, right. and it's a pretty good sequence. Yeah. And then he's kind of like, oh, it goes according to plan. And, and then, then you don't see him happens. again. Yeah. And I was just like, well, <laughs> there's more to this guy. Right. I, r- I wonder if maybe something was cut out. Or- I don't know, but that, yeah. that left a sour taste in my me, mouth. Me too. But let's talk about Hogwarts and sexy Dumbledore. Okay. What did you think of Jude Law? Jude Law is great as Dumbledore. Mm-hmm. I think he embodies Dumbledore better than Michael Gamden did. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I I have a lot of issues with Michael Gamden's portrayal of Dumbledore, especially in episodes four, five, and six. Uh huh. It's been a while since I've seen the movies. I said episodes or books four, five, six, whatever. 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 But yeah, I think he really it does a better job of embodying kind of the Ed Harris take on Dumbledore. Mm-hmm. Uh, sly, clever. Uh. Richard Harris. Rich, what what I say? You said Ed Harris. Ed, oh God! Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Richard. <laughs> That'd be May a much different. Yeah, that would be a much different. different one. But the uh, he's he's does a really good job with the the underlying because Dumbledore's ma- manipulative too. Right. There's okay. no there's no doubt about it. But they do a good job portraying that side of Dumbledore as well. Mm. And so I had I wanted more of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I wanted more Dumbledore in the movie. Hopefully that comes later on but yeah going back to hogwarts uh I, this is a lot of fun mm-hmm. the i i will as a fan nitpick one thing which i'm surprised jk rowling did this so dumbledore is teaching defense against the dark arts right he's not the defense against the dark arts teacher never was he was huh. a transfiguration teacher oh prof- professor wow always was huh so <laughs> To quote The Simpsons, gee, I hope someone got fired from that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's just like no, that's a pretty big. That is, to me, that's thing. a pretty big uh, thing because mm-hmm. Dumbledore has this very um, strenuous relationship with the dark arts, given his relationship with Grindelwald, which right. was kind of why I assumed maybe he stayed away from the defense mm-hmm. against the dark arts. Uh, uh, post anyway, mm-hmm. but yeah, it was very clear that he's he's the transfiguration teacher, huh. professor. Wow, maybe I'm missing something in the canon that I I I don't know about, but hmm. or maybe something new will be introduced in the yeah canon. maybe <laughs> uh, so um yeah I uh, we're dancing around spoilers. I can't think of anything else to really. Uh, did you feel it uh, like? Where did this leave you? Like, like it was disappointing, but like, are you excited for that? No, I'm not. Um, like I said, the uh, the things that have brought been brought into canon mm-hmm. now have me left with I wish that weren't canon. And and there's there's one big part of the canon that we'll get into in spoilers that mm-hmm. really left me just disappointed, H- yeah. hugely disappointed. I. Uh... Yeah, I, I I can imagine because I, I I left the theater just going like like I was more confused than it like right it's so well yeah to talk about it in a roundabout way it's built up to be such a big moment and like for me I'm like anticipating like those types of moments in movies being like oh wow like just mind blowing things but it was like. Like this was just like what like yeah it just uh, did it, not track see right now. I'm just thinking, how you're really gonna have to explain this one to yeah. me, because I honestly I do not see how that is a, even a thing. Right, right. So I, and you're you're talking about wizards in general, <laughs> <laughs> magic, magic. <laughs> Where's Jesus and all of this? Right. Uh, yeah. In terms of Grindelwald and everything, did you feel like his arc in the movie and like the whole point of him like? 
Well, we'll go into okay. spoilers. One one more thing. Like, um, there was one thing that I really liked that they brought into canon, and it was kind of similar to what they did in the original Fantastic Beasts by introducing the Obscurial yes. a, as uh, something in the magical world, which I loved that about the original Fantastic Beasts. Right. What I liked what they did here was the Maledictus. Nagini's maledictus yes. uh, yeah, curse. What it, okay, I, let's so, talk about that. So I really enjoy. I, I'm not going to say that I love the fact that Nagini is in the mm-hmm. movie, but I love the canon that there's something called a maledictus curse, mm-hmm. where it's a blood curse that's gonna. This person's gonna be transformed into a beast mm-hmm. forever at some point in their life. I, I like that kind of that that kind of magic. In theory, I love that introduction to the canon that Nagini it, like was a woman and everything in practice in the movie. Like I came away from the movie just thinking like, okay, well the only thing that it did was introduce that Nagini was a woman. That's, that's exactly like, right. Yeah. Like so, there was no substance to that character at all. I, I am a hundred percent with you on that. Mm-hmm. Um, because now they're just going to have to write it, write her twist into the canon as to how yeah. she become involved with Voldemort. Yeah. Which like, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Like it kind of, maybe, I don't know if it would have been, I don't know how it would have been to, to like hardcore fans of the, the series, but like, what if they just didn't call attention to the fact that she's Nagini and like save that for like later when the blood curse takes over and like she becomes Nagini. Right. Um, I don't know. It just felt like it was just what more. It, I, I just, it's going to be hard for me to it, for me it's going to be hard for them to organically make her come into possession of Voldemort. Now it's just yeah. going to be like we have to write it in as this because right. we have Nagini in this movie. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. It, like again on uh, like you said on paper I think it's it's a really fun kind of backstory for Nagini but now seeing it in film you're just kind of like okay but now what? It kind of feels like the and I don't I don't want to put this out into the universe because <laughs> because we have a what feels like over the years we've had a surplus of cre- uh, creative um, uh, IPs that are writing along as they go, <laughs> like <laughs> the new Star Wars movies. Like they're kind of just like they don't. We don't need to get into that discussion. Because... We don't. But I'm just using that as an yeah. example because this feels like they're just. It feels like J.K. Rowling is just like, okay, well, got the first one, right? What are we gonna do in this one? All right, this one's done. What are we gonna do in this one? And that does well, not like, seem like her it, style. Well, you know, in the in the when writing the book, she she had the outline for the uh-huh. entire seven books. Uh-huh. So you know, she knew from the onset from the books that this is Snape's motivation, right? And that he's this key uh, component throughout mm-hmm. the entire series, right? So, but you're right. You don't get the sense that that's the way it's happened here. I exactly. feel like that Warner Brothers came out and said, hey, uh, you want a five movie deal? She's like, oh, I can start writing. Right. Uh, what I think would have been good is if they took away all of her money, made her go, <laughs> made her go be a waitress at a restaurant. That way she can just write the write the uh, story of the five movies <laughs> on like little napkins and stuff. And then that's where, because that worked for That's right. You know what? You got to go back to where you came from. <laughs> right. And if she wanted to send us to obsessiveviewer.com slash donate, that's fine. <laughs> but, um, God, can you, can you imagine if I was the first billionaire podcaster? Um, anyway. I literally cannot. I know, me neither. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I'll remember that. Anyway. <laughs> um, let's go into spoilers for right, Fantastic yeah. Beasts, uh, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Grindelwald. The wizarding and non-wizarding worlds have been at peace for over a century. Grindelwald wants to see that piece destroyed. You want me to hunt him down? To kill him? Dumbledore, why can't you go? I cannot move against Grindelwald. It has to be you. You don't suffer from motion sickness, see? I don't do well on boats. You'll be fine. All right. Spoilers on for Fantastic Beasts. Before we get to the big twist, because I know that we want to talk about that, I do want to mention that I one of the kind of big parts for me that I liked was and I'm gonna I'm gonna get the uh the name of the the name of the mirror wrong, but 
Dumbledore looking into the mirror of Erised or yeah, yeah, and seeing Grindelwald and like it's like the most we've seen of gay Dumbledore. So did you read that as like a like a romantic kind of? Oh, I've always writing? I've always read those two as romantically involved. Mm-hmm. I've never had a doubt of that. I was actually disappointed before this movie came out where they said they were not going to make any addresses of uh, their relationship as mm-hmm. being romantic. But I feel like they did. Yeah. Like, oh, I, yeah. I really felt like, and I was happy about that. Me too. I, I really enjoyed that. So I, I was glad that they kind of addressed it. Now, they didn't come out and, Same you know, here. have a big makeout session between right. the two, but it's very much implied, hey, these, these two men were romantically involved. Right. And there was a great love between one mm-hmm. another. And I, and I liked how that felt like it was, you know, the, like he, he can't, he can't move against Grindelwald. Um, so, all right. So, so yeah. that that brings us to my biggest mm-hmm. gripe about the new portion of the canon. Okay. Okay. So, in the movie, they they introduce this piece of jewelry mm-hmm. uh, that you don't know what it is until the very end. Right. So, a it, blood pack. It turns out it's a blood pack that mm-hmm. they made that means that n- neither of them can ever fight one another that that's the piece of the canon that you don't like and here's why okay so my interpretation throughout reading the original series and knowing how the story progresses Mm -hmm. has always been that dumbledore doesn't move against grinnell because he is still in love with him and he can't bring himself to fight him in a manner of which will might destroy grinnell Okay. But that to me has been obliterated by, well, we made this blood pack and, huh. and, and so instead of having that moral turmoil on him, now he's like, well, maybe I can get around that blood pack. Interesting. And, th- and now it, it looks like, like the, the whole fact was, it doesn't even matter now that they had this very close relationship. Now he's like, well, I'm a magical genius. I can get around this blood pack and then I'll go whoop his ass. That's interesting. So like, that, that is yeah. what I hate. I, oh, I loved the fact that the magical world had to be driven to the brink of destruction mm-hmm. for him to overcome his feelings of Grenoble to finally face him. I liked that wow. lure. But now that's gone, right? Because now it's because of a of a blood pact that they made, and he huh. very nonchalantly is like, "Yeah, I think I can." Wow! And to me, that just kind of destroys the lore of Grindelwald and Dumbledore. So that's, that is the biggest thing that I huh. that I am disappointed about. That is fascinating to me because, like, I like I don't remember enough. Like, I remember loving the the books but like i don't remember those finer details and everything because i'm an idiot but um, <laughs> but like it, it's been a few like while you were saying that i just got the first harry potter book on audible because i want to go through and listen to all of them again nice but um then stephen fry do the voice work for he those he does like the uk versions oh, okay. uh jim dale does them for the u.s well they're two completely different books one's the philosopher's stone one's the sorcerer's well, stone of course, so. of course um but yeah, I, I, when you put it that way, yeah, that's, that's terrible. Like, oh my God. Like, that's, yeah, I, I really, it was downtrodden by that whole, yeah. that, by that revelation. I hated it. Wow. I was thinking, I, I thought you were, in our whole non spoiler section, I thought you were just alluding to Dumbledore having a brother. Oh, I have major problems with that as yeah. well. Uh, yeah, since I don't really have anything to talk about the blood pact or anything, I agree with what you said. Like, holy, like, that changes, that seems like it fundamentally changes a, what is maybe not an overt reading of the original books or anything, but, like, it's something that is present enough there, gives enough context to it. Like, it, it overrides that by just yeah. introducing a new piece right. of magic. Um, but Dumbledore's brother... <laughs> First of all, first of all, he doesn't even look like a Dumbledore. For I Christ's know, right? sake, they're all fucking silver haired. Right. Even the sister. I mean, now mm-hmm. hey, you got fucking black haired credence. Yeah. Um, I just, I, the whole movie. Okay. This was my thing. And granted, I, like I said, I have a very hazy memory of the lore of Harry Potter. So I, the timeline is not right for what I'm about to say. Probably not right for what I'm about to say. But the entire movie, from beginning to just before the end, um, 
the whole movie, Credence is like, where do I come from? Who am I? And everything. I'm thinking naively enough that it's going to be like revealed that like he's Tom Riddle and that he's actually Voldemort. Oh, that would have I, I would have like stormed out of the theater. See, that's it's because I I don't know the timeline and or the chronology enough of it or whatever. So I was like, that's what I was anticipating, and then because I again limited. Well, I mean, before. timeline wise, that's impossible. Okay. Because Dumbledore was teachers was a professor at Hogwarts while Tom Riddle was there in like the late forties. Okay. And okay. And Tom Riddle was the original like Tom Riddle turned into Voldemort. There was no like previous version of No, Voldemort. Tom Riddle Tom Riddle was beca- he, Gotcha. Basically I am Tom Riddle. He mm. or I, I am Voldemort was taken from Tom Marvolo Riddle. Right. I so. remember Ginny, 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 Ginny had the the diary. And she did have the diary. But anyway, um, that was just my like limited memory of the lore, like guess. Right. Um. So I spent the whole movie anticipating like either that or just someone we knew. For a second, I was like, "Is he Hagrid? Maybe? Like, <laughs> like what the fuck is going on?" Um. But then it was just like, "Oh no, no, no." no. He's the brother of a character that, like, this this character himself, from my knowledge, has not been referenced at all. Here's So I have so many problems yes. with that. For, for one... Take this soapbox and stand on it. <laughs> so Dumbledore's father went to Azkaban okay. for attacking some muggles that attacked Ariana. Okay. And he died in Azkaban. Hmm. And his mother ended up dying later on like okay. i, I want to say like less than a decade after the dad went to ask man so i'm really confused as to when this child was conceived and with whom the huh. child was conceived it yeah. can't it can't be a full brother right it just can't well the hair shows enough of that <laughs> so like again they're really gonna have to do some writing to make this legit and that's so and, frustrating and the only other thing i can think of is maybe grindelwald is fucking with him yeah that maybe it's a it's a it's a red herring i could see that but like i don't see them the doing that, now. that yeah i don't th- i don't see them yeah. ending the movie on the red herring right so and here's my here, here's my other issue with this mm-hmm. and I, I i'll draw parallels to uh, the last jedi on this okay why does credence have to be somebody of note what does it matter yeah. and that was the, the, my same argument with ray why do people give a shit if she's like the granddaughter grandniece or whatever of the skywalker right why can't somebody of great magic just come up mm-hmm. because tom riddle is that right. Tom Riddle is the son of a mediocre witch and a muggle. Mm-hmm. And he goes on to be one of the gr- most powerful wizards mm-hmm. in the wizarding world. Why I can't say they're saying greatest? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Why does Credence have to have some famous surname? Why can't he just have this extreme power? And why can't he just find out he's nobody? Mm-hmm. He is just an orphan. that got shipped off to America. Yeah. He doesn't need to be a Dumbledore. He doesn't have to be a Lestrange. He does not have to be a Potter. He can just be credence, mm-hmm. and that, and so again, that to me, to make him a Dumbledore just seems to be a reveal for the sake of being a reveal. Exactly. Yes. Um, and while I can kind of, I can play devil's advocate and say like, well, it's expanding the mythology in a, a shitty way by by your account, which I agree with, but it's at least not like. Like that's one thing that because like okay if it, if it, if he was like a relative of Tom Riddle or if he was like a relative to someone other than Dumbledore yeah. like if he was like an established character that like basically if the twist was oh he is John Riddle and he's gonna have a kid named Tom like that just I guess to play devil's advocate it just fits the narrative of the whole series this breaks it open in a way which but like, here here's my other issue though this series isn't about credence or this series yeah. this series is supposed to be about the rise of grindelwald mm-hmm. and his attempt to take over the wizarding world mm-hmm. so now you have credence and they're really trying to put credence in the middle of all this yeah and the way they're doing it is by making him a double door yeah which i don't know i 
like I said, I didn't really care the whole movie <laughs> about much of anything in it just because I wasn't invested in it. But like, I don't like I don't see where they're going with it. I don't care to know what they're going. I don't where they're going right. With it. Um, but I will say again to kind of play devil's advocate, just to put you in a corner. <laughs> um, well, okay. The end of book what six? Uh, Snape killing Dumbledore. Spoiler alert! Sorry, yeah. guys. Um, like that's maybe not a red herring, but it's like we get a completely different perspective on that in in book seven. Like we get like a completely different, like it completely shifts the perspective of that. So, for the there... record, I always trusted Snape. Oh, well, no. I came out of book six still. I I knew that there was something else behind it. I knew that there was, mm. I still had faith in Snape mm -hmm. after book six. Interesting. There was a large group of us too. Okay. okay. Yeah. So just, <laughs> I was alone. I went to meetings, <laughs> <laughs> support groups. Yes. Um, but like my, my point is like, okay, there's this ends on a, like, uh, okay, this is, he's a Dumbledore. He has like a lot of power. I get like, and I, I don't understand why the why being a Dumbledore has to make you powerful. Mm -hmm. Dumbledore is arguably the most powerful wizard to ever have lived, right. but there is never any mention of his parents being of extraordinary magic. Right. Um, Albel Fourth is you know he's a he's a decent capable wizard, but mm -hmm. you know they make a big deal of he had weird experiments with goats, which I always found funny. Nice. But they they never talk about Abelforth being like anything extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Ariana was arguably an obscurial. Okay. Um. So not to say that that doesn't make her powerful, but it also doesn't make her anything extraordinary right. except for the circumstances that made her an obscurial. So there's never any mention of Ariana have any extraordinary magical powers. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why being a Dumbledore all of a sudden is like, it's like he's a fucking Skywalker. Right. So I, I don't. And that's what it feels like. That's right. That's exactly what it feels like. And it's just bland. Yeah. Bland and uninteresting to me. So uh, I, like I really, they're going to have to do some really good writing for me to actually enjoy the twist of him, of him being yeah. Dumbledore and make it meaningful. Because yeah. right now, to me, it's not meaningful. Yeah. In fact, you just leave a lot of people confused as to right. how the fuck can he be a Dumbledore? Oh, yeah. It's like, it's, it seems like it's more, and maybe I'm going to contradict what I just said in my, like, being a devil's advocate and everything, but it seems like it's more, more about just, fan service or more about like giving something to the fans rather than organically yeah. expanding I, something. And most, I, I don't know. My sister is a hardcore Harry Potter fan too. Mm -hmm. She loved it. And I haven't, I haven't talked to her about it yet okay. because, and I do want to talk, get her take on all this, mm -hmm. but it's funny because obviously my wife is a hardcore fan too. Mm -hmm. And she walked out of the, uh, the movie thoroughly having enjoyed it. Okay. And then we had a short discussion on the way home mm -hmm. and about 5 minutes later she like yells down from downstairs I you're I fucking hate that you're right. <laughs> and she goes I I used before we started dating and I never used to analyze anything and now and now I have to listen to you and you you're right. I'm like you're welcome. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's uh yeah, I I don't know. It it is what it is. I don't it We'll we'll see. Yeah. Where, have they said anything about like where the next one's going to take place? Or I don't. Th if they have, I don't know. I haven't okay. heard. So, how about the Lita Lestrange side story? Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was just really unnecessary. Yeah, the whole thing on the boat and everything. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I like it was kind of, the the Lestrange kind of family history was semi interesting. Mm -hmm. Sure, but I really like. I felt like the whole switching of babies things was completely unnecessary. Oh, yeah. Only, and it was only there for the fact to kind of explain the Dumbledore twist. Yes. That these two estranged babies just happened to be on the same boat at the mm. same time, and fucking Lita's like, fuck this kid. I'm right. Switching this shit. Yeah. It uh, was just, it was just weird and unnecessary. And the, the wizard, the French wizard they meet, I felt like his, you know, his backstory was just unnecessary again. The other Lestrange where he, he made a unbreakable vow to murder the child. Oh yeah. 
uh, honestly, up it's until like this point, forgettable, right? Up it's until like, this point, I yeah, I completely forgot he was in the movie. Yeah, I was like, you, who we cares? don't even know that he's a Lestrange until that moment. Well, in, exactly. Like that. Yeah, again, that was another one where they had to hold your hand through this exactly. because there's no lead up to mm-hmm. what this could or could not be. Like a bit, like they start this movie trying to like, did you hear the? He might be the missing Lestrange sibling, right? Like, appa- okay, apparently the missing Lestrange sibling's a thing. Yeah, that nobody. Yeah. Okay, all right, I'm on. I'm on for the ride, I guess. And then it's like, well, nope. It was uh, played a little, uh, little switcheroo. And right. I, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. It w- and, se- and second of all, what was the reason for the dad to send the baby Lestrange away again? I honestly don't remember. Because I, I no the idea. mother dies in childbirth. Right. And then doesn't he fall in love with someone else? Yeah. The person that died in childbirth. Huh. So he went and he uh, okay. imperious right, right, right. Lita's mother mm-hmm. and ha- and conceived Lita. Mm-hmm. Then finds this new girl and pregnates her, mm-hmm. and she dies in childbirth. And then he's just like, and they make a big deal for him to be like. He he really loved this child, and like, right. and he's like, "All right, off to America yeah. with you." It's like, did, did he though? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm really confused by that. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, that was that was a mess. The and like I said uh, again, broken record, but I just didn't care yeah. about about that. Um, what did you think of Grindelwald's escape in the beginning? Oh, that was, that was a great sequence. That that. I love I that. That was a great sequence. Yeah. Um, I, it was a lot of fun. It was neat seeing, uh, the, the, the powerful magic that he was mm-hmm. able to employ. Yeah. The, the opening sequence was fantastic. Yeah. And I will say this, the climactic sequence was great too. Mm-hmm. And I, I really liked the manipulation of the situation there mm-hmm. by having, him be able to see, look what they're doing. I'm just trying to speak the truth, and yeah. they're attacking us because that that is so authentic to like it, a fascist regime, right? And dictator, like like all that, like what the allegory is. It's very authentic to that. And Queenie's Queenie's turn to mm-hmm. for her to become a Grinvault supporter, I thought was the most organic thing to happen in the entire movie, and I <sighs> liked that turn. And. And yeah, I can see that. Like I can I can follow the breadcrumbs there. I can follow the I can follow the logic of it and I do appreciate that like it is like the one she is the one like kind of most impressionable character right. yeah. and like it's it, you can see and she has the reasoning. She she has yeah. love, you know, she loves Jacob, but mm. you know, the American laws is that she's not allowed to uh right. engage in relationships with uh no magic. No magic. No magic. But so I like her reasoning, you know, she sees it as a, a means of, you know, human cooperation. Right. You know, and going back to the Credence thing, mm-hmm. I, I, I like her at the end mm-hmm. helping Grenvault kind of see into the depths of Credence. Mm-hmm. And you could have still had Credence there without giving a shit about who he right. was. Oh, yeah. He, like, Grenvault clearly is using him as a tool mm-hmm. for his own personal gain. You can still do that without him being a Dumbledore. Right. Because the whole point is that he needs Credence to go and kill Dumbledore. Yes. Like, that's that's the whole point. Like, why does he... It just uh, making him a Dumbledore and setting the stage for him to go try to kill Dumbledore is seems so much more like it's contrived, um, like like a con- it's a contrivance. It's it's a contrived like uh way to try to get us more emotionally invested in this, right. which I mean I. And now, and now here's the other problem I have. Mm-hmm. So now you've introduced this as Credence as being Dumbledore's brother. With three movies left to go, at some point you have to know, Dumbledore has to figure out if he is in fact his brother, that mm-hmm. he's got a younger brother. Right. That apparently he's never mentioned to anybody, yeah. even though he has spilt his family secrets to Harry in book right. seven, but he never, Oh, by the way, I said there's a younger brother, <laughs> Obscurial. It was a whole thing, man. It, was, it confuses me. Uh, just just let it go. They should go back and... Uh, <laughs> uh, go is back. this going to be a Star Wars it thing? Is. <laughs> um, <laughs> just prepare yourself. Uh, they should go back and re-edit the last movie <laughs> and have Jude Law in as a ghost, like saying, like, hey, by the way, I have a brother. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> 
I, I had to. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just it just seems so. It seems like it was trying so hard to be, like to to um, pull one over on the audience. Yeah, and, and it just wasn't organic. And not, uh, like now, I, I just feel like with that reveal, they have to do backtracking from the original story, mm-hmm. and it's just like I like I said before the spoilers. They've introduced canon that has ruined some aspects of the story for me. So. Yeah. Well, uh, that's too bad. I'm it sorry. is. It is too bad yeah. because Harry Potter is one of my biggest fandoms. So. Right. Wow. Well, I'm sorry again that a prequel is <laughs> ruining a franchise. Fuck off. <laughs> hey, at least they made movies. <laughs> um, and they made good movies. Some of them notwithstanding, but. You're least, not a Star Wars fan and never will be. It's okay. I won't be, but it's just, it's, I'm just still bitter about the Dark Tower. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there anything else we need to talk about in spoilers? No, I think I can step off my fo- soapbox here. Okay. So. Um, so yeah, so that's our spoiler review of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Um, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I will still, oh, that was the, that was a big point that I was going to make is that it felt like instead of having five movies mapped out, it felt like this movie being movie two of five, like the way that the story went felt more like it was the fifth movie or the fourth movie. It basically felt like they were on the uh, penultimate movie and realized like, Oh shit, we have a whole other movie we have to do. Yeah. Let's just stretch this out as much as we can to before we get to the actual end game. And like having that type of reaction from me makes me very uh hesitant about three, four, or five. I am too. Yeah. And obviously I'll see them, e- mm-hmm. even if they progressively get worse, but yeah. it's just and I'll buy Crimes of Grin and Vault because I, I'll have to. I, I don't yeah, I don't blame you there. Yeah. Um, I bought the Dark Tower, right. so I, yeah, I cannot cast any, uh, consumer aspersions <laughs> yeah. at you. Um, yeah, so that, that's our review of The Crimes of Grindelwald. Um, yeah, let us know what you think. Hopefully someone out there liked it. Do you know? I want to, I want to hear other Harry Potter people's opinions. Cause honestly, I have not talked to it, a whole lot of other pa- Potter freaks about it. I was just going to ask what, like, the reception has been. From the, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I know a lot of the reviews from like IGN had had issues with it too, but mm. I have not really heard much from the fandoms. Uh, I, I would like to though. Okay. Well, yeah. Let us know what you think, and uh, yeah, I think we're gonna round it out with some potpourri. Um, yeah, for those first time listeners, potpourri is a section of the podcast where we talk about whatever we want as long as it smells good. Stuff we've watched lately, looking forward to all that. Um, I have two things. You have one thing. So I'm going to go ahead and go first. Okay, um, go first. Yeah. Um, and I kind of forgot what the first one I was going to bring up was. Oh, my God. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So my first potpourri is Finders Keepers. Um, it's a documentary from 2015. Uh, the plot description is... Ampute- uh, I thought you were about to sneeze. No. <laughs> Uh, amputee John Wood finds himself a, in a stranger than fiction battle to reclaim his mummified leg from entrepreneur Shannon Wisnant, who found it in a grill that he bought at an auction. Wait, you say this is a documentary? Yeah. Yep. Okay. It is a documentary. Basically, this guy bought a grill, found a severed leg in it, um, and the leg belonged to an amputee who wanted it back, but the guy who bought the grill was like this, I don't know how to describe him. Like he was, he was uh, an entrepreneur in air quotes. Like he was trying to get, like he was always trying to like sell stuff and like, get, like get. So was he not wanting to give the leg back? He wasn't. Cause he wanted to sell or he wanted to like do a whole like sideshow of it and stuff. Or like he was, he was wanting to ride the, the fame. Cause it was like it, the documentary itself is, it, it's an interesting look behind like it's it's an interesting look past the local news coverage of like like if you watch the news like they'll end end the broadcast with like a and you won't believe what happened right yeah yeah. it's like 
it's like they took one of those, which this was one of those stories, and just made a documentary about it. So you get to see like the characters involved with it. You get to see the full scale of like what happened and, and everything. You get more than just the like kooky, like, Oh, these crazy people over here, uh, kind of story that's on the news. So like, I liked it for that context. Um, hated the subjects. <laughs> like, hate, like, Oh my Even God. Even the amputee. I guess. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like hey, he just fine. because he's an amputee doesn't mean he can't be a jerk. Now to be fair, yeah, exactly. Um, but the guy, Shannon Winzant, he, um, the, the guy that was kind of the entrepreneur of it, he's on, on one hand, he's a kind of fascinating, like, character. Um, and he is a character, like, he's, like, he's eccentric. Yeah, huh? Eccentric. Exce- very eccentric, yeah. yes. Um, but my God, I hated him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I feel bad saying that because he's dead now, but, um, <laughs> I I have this argument with people all the time. Mm. Just because a person has died doesn't make him have been a good person well, no, in real life. He's the greatest person ever, yeah. right? <laughs> like I have the like uh, I, people just like shouldn't say that about someone who's dead. I was like, I don't care that he's dead. He was an asshole when he was alive. It. I feel bad saying this, but Osama bin Laden was kind of an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> um, no, like, but yeah, the guy died a couple years ago, and it's funny because there's a like he like he's this this heavy set like. Um, I don't know. I don't know the actual like nomenclature of it, but like he's like kind of a southern hick. Like he's got. That's kind probably of a, a good nomenclature for it. Yeah, and like and like, I have a weird thing about like southern like hick accents. Like I just, I just, I don't like it. Like they kind of grate on my nerves a little bit. Just the accents themselves. You must be having a fun time with Red Dead. It's no, no, no. no. Like that's. That's kind of fine because it's more like kind of a drawl, I guess. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> um, I always uh, like when I when I'm playing it, I'm like, even though I, even though he's not the main character, I keep saying like, I'm John Marsden, <laughs> um, <laughs> just because I love the voice and everything. But he does have a good voice. He does. Yeah. But um, but yeah, like that, like that's fine. But like, it's the kind of like the the more like. No, I know, like kind of like Kentucky, Alabama. Yeah, yeah, like the um, uh, like Cleet is a slack John Yoko. Yeah, 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 like the um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like um, slack John Yoko. No, like I don't want to say willfully, but like the gleefully uneducated kind uh. of accent. <laughs> like that's that's the connection. Uh, you know, I yeah, that's. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, now. that's the association I make yeah. in my brain. <laughs> I'm like I look gleefully uneducated. Yeah, <laughs> like, and I think that the accent itself, like, like, it's. I I think it's just because I I like the English language and I like grammar. Like, right. like anytime I see online someone misspell the word "woe" as "w o a h" instead of "w h o a," like I have a small like. I don't know. Aneurysm. aneurysm. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just have a respect for the English language, even though I, you know, butcher it every week on the podcast. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but I just, I, anyway, so, so anyway, uh, I just, I just couldn't like that character. I was like, I, I hate this guy. I just hate this guy. Cause he's like, I mean, he's kind of a dick. He's just trying, like, he's, oh, if he's trying, trying to, to keep somebody's amputated yeah, leg from he's him. He's trying yeah. to make like a quick buck. He's trying to make, like, make a name for himself as the guy with the, with the, uh, wow, I can't remember what name he gave himself or whatever, but like he's, he's just not a likable guy. Um, like there's one point where he gets like an offer to go on like a reality type show that it's like for auctioneers or, or auction something and like for kooky things or whatever. And like he's, he like he's realizing that he's, you know, they're making him look stupid on purpose. Right. Like, well, it's cause you're kind of an yeah. idiot, but that's fine. But, um, also, also the, it's, he's just a bizarre guy, but I feel like I'm just shitting on this dead guy, but that's fine. <laughs> um, remove, remove that audio. Isolate it and out of context. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just shitting on this dead guy. Um, but like, I felt like, I felt like kind of a dick cause I was like watching and I was like, like him and his wife are like eating like a, uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And like, there's a point where like, I think he either pours a bunch of salt on it or sugar. And I'm like, no wonder he has a heart attack in a year and a half. Like, yeah. Like, I don't, I, I'm not like the most, like 
the most uh, dietary restrictive person and everything, but I'm like, that's going to give you a heart attack. Let's just throw some sugar on the sugar. Exactly. That also reminded me, the one thing about the flatbread pizza at uh, AMC <laughs> is like like the whole time I was watching the movie, I was like, I can kind of have like a little bit of indigestion, like a little bit of heartburn. <laughs> It's like I don't normally get like I don't get like heartburn heartburn but like that did anyway. Finders keepers. It's interesting enough, but I just I just it's the one of those cases where I just didn't like the subject, like the people that I interviewed. Although it does end in an interesting way, which the I don't I don't know how the timeline goes and everything, but basically, um, uh, I guess spoilers for it. I guess the guy. The entrepreneur guy like announces that he's going to run for president in 2016. Oh, of course he is. Yeah, and I thought that that was really interesting, and I kind of wondered like where, like when they decided to put that in there, because like it, like in terms of like Trump and everything. But right. Anyway, it was it's on Netflix. It's eh. oh, uh, this was one of those like Netflix roulettes that I did where I just basically. I'm kind of intrigued to watch it now. To be oh honest. yeah, I'll probably watch it. Nice. Well, let me know what you think. I will. Um, and also let me know what you think, or let me know what you think of the movie that you brought for Potpourri. <gasps> Creed 2. Yes. Cruise Control, apparently, as you yeah. keep saying. I'm so happy with that joke. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, cause, okay, background, I went to the movie and I saw it and like, I checked in on, on Facebook and I didn't have a lot of time before the movie started, so I just put, like, usually I put like, oh, I'm excited for this or I'm looking forward to this, but I just put Creed 2 and I just put Cruise Control. <laughs> and like, <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, thank you. Anyway, so what do you think of Creed 2 Cruise Control? All right, so let, let me start <laughs> off. I had a Matt experience at the movie Ooh, theater. Ooh, interesting. So, okay. First of all, when I, I went after work, uh, mm-hmm. and. Did you have a change of clothes? I did have a change of clothes. Good. Uh, so I, I go after work and I'm, I'm checking in with mm-hmm. my, you know, my movie pat A list. Mm-hmm. And this I guy see. in front of me, I see he's holding this, uh, one year old child as he's checking oh, in. And God. I'm just thinking to myself, I know you're going to go see Creed 2. Yeah. I just, I know that's what you're here to see. And sure enough, uh. he's in Creed 2. So I have to deal with this baby crying throughout almost the entire movie. So you punched him in the head. Uh, the entire back <laughs> row is a loud, obnoxious, talky back row. They're like oh, there, no. it's a giant group there together. And the person in front of me was snoring halfway through the movie. God. None of that was enough to deter my love for this movie. Though. Nice. I ha- I've always been a Rocky guy. I mm-hmm. I've, I grew up on those films. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't care for Rocky Five, but I thought Rocky sure. Balboa was a fun uh, revamp of the franchise. Mm-hmm. And Creed, I thought was a great revamp of the franchise. Mm-hmm. I I, I love the first Creed. I love the new character, and I love the dynamic between Michael B. Jordan and uh, Rocky. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's that's a great. They have great scenes together. Yeah. So I came into this super excited for Creed 2, especially because I, I can tell you right now that Rocky 4 is not a good movie. Sure. But I love Rocky 4. I'm okay with that. Absolutely. I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. So to see Drago back in the picture for Creed 2, of course I'm excited. Yeah. So I sent you and Peter the same text once mm-hmm. I left this movie. It was... um Creed 2 was predictable, derivative of past Rocky films, and what what else did cliched, I say? I think. Yeah, and, and cliched, and I loved every minute, minute mm. of it, and that holds true. Nice. Like, this was just a fun boxing movie, mm. nostalgic from the original, or not the original, but from Rocky 4, right. and still adds a lot to the character of Creed. Like, I mm. think that that is still a really good character. Adonis is a great character. I love him and his uh Tessa ne- Thompson. Te- yeah, Tessa Thompson. I love his mom. Like yeah. I think she has some great scenes in this movie. Mm-hmm. And Sylvester Stallone just is still Rocky. He still mm-hmm. is that street dumb, you know, punching bag, but mm-hmm. he's he's a great character. Yeah. And this this movie just didn't, didn't disappoint. It did everything a Rocky movie always does and it just you walk out of it knowing that you just had a lot of fun at the movie theater 
Nice. And there's also a couple like really good series, like the whole thing with with uh, Ivan Drago, like his mm-hmm. what happened to him after the Rocky Four fight is very interesting and kind of like an, an intriguing aspect of the story. Oh yeah, it, like and I loved the scene between Rocky and Ivan and the restaurant. Yes, that I that was just a fantastic scene. I, I kind of wish they had more. Together, I did, t- but like the the short amount they had was just electric right it is like it's heartbreaking see like what was done mm-hmm. to him after the loss of that fight yeah. like how it destroyed his life it humanizes him and victor's like like motivation and right everything. like in a way because like i haven't seen rocky four in a long time i saw creed too by the way um so like I, I going into it like my memory of rocky four is just like oh the the you know crazy Crazy Russian evil right. person, and, and that's pretty much how it's yeah. portrayed. You know, he killed he killed Apollo, and right. now Rocky's got to go fight fight for democracy. Right, and it's it's ridiculous, Yo, yeah. but it's a lot of fun. Right, it, but this movie puts a serious turn on it. Actually, yeah. like you said, it gives character death to mm-hmm. Ivan, and I never thought that uh, Victor had any trouble getting having depth of the characters like i understand his right. motivation you know you know he grew up under the destroyed life of his father yeah. and his country leaving him and his mother leaving him mm-hmm. by the way Bridget nelson nielsen coming back that was a shock yeah oh yeah and like she went through a train wreck phase and she seemed to have pulled herself together again mm-hmm. i guess but oh, yeah, yeah For as, as as much as she could much, yeah right. i mean it's a step up from dating uh flavor flav on on flavor of love oh god and celebrity rehab, but yeah, I was shocked yeah. to to see her back in the mix. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, but I I lo- I loved the dynamic between Rocky and Adonis, and also mm-hmm. Victor and Ivan. I I thought both of those, all four of those character characters had really good chemistry with one another, yeah. and really expanded on the mythology and the story. So mm-hmm. I I was a huge fan. Nice. I uh, I liked the movie quite a bit. Uh, a little bit less than you did. I had some like nits to pick and everything. I will say, <laughs> my theater experience though. Uh, anytime there's a boxing scene, there was a person in the row in front of me that would lean up to the point where I could like see over the like like the railing uh-huh. thing, and like would bob and weave his head <laughs> and stuff. And, like I was just like, oh my get God, at him, man. This guy's really into it. Um, and then it was also awkward because like I got a seat like right in the middle of my preferred seat and then like one person was like in the seat right next to me one person was in the seat left next to me <laughs> and then like there was like seats like on either side of them i'm like you guys gonna, wanted to sandwich me are huh? they gonna give me a buffer seat or, <laughs> or what um but but yeah i, I kind of felt like the it did expand like or it did develop and give depth to creed as a character and everything but i feel like the emotional hook for him like it didn't resonate with me the way that it did with the first creed my memory of the first creed movie at least like it was not that i wasn't that i was disconnected from it or anything but it just felt like i wasn't as invested as the first one i could see that um yeah not to say that not to say that they don't give him anything because they give him plenty of stuff right but it just it wasn't as i guess fresh as the first one also i feel like the movie was kind of missing a little bit of humor because like the first one has like some really good like comedic elements to it and like after the movie i saw like oh sly stallone wrote co-wrote the script so maybe that's why yeah i don't remember who exactly wrote the uh, did ryan coogler write the first one i can't I, i don't recall i feel like he did but i feel like that that was a more focused script in terms of uh dialogue and everything um the 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 boxing scenes like like okay the first movie has that incredible like i haven't seen creed the, the, the first the fr- it does it does not top creed's it, boxing scenes it doesn't the, there was something about the boxing scenes right. of creeds that are just well, so engrossing there's that one that's one complete take like yeah. one full take and like i went into creed 2 thinking like okay ryan coogler did this in the first one there's a different director for this one. I'm not expecting them to try to top that. I'm not even expecting them to like do anything like that. I'm just expecting them to do a coherent fight sequences. 
And uh, like there wasn't that much like flash in terms of camera work, but with the absence of that, like there's no like one long take or anything like that. But the absence of that like brings forth the kind of brutality of it because like the actual like even though it gets kind of like kind of cliched slow motion and everything, like the weight of the punches. Oh like, yeah, you you feel felt like so deep. And Victor is that is a scary looking yes. motherfucker. Oh yeah, like I, oh, yeah. I I I would chip my pants. Oh, if he, me too. he was just like pointing at me, but no 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 absolutely, no. <laughs> um, terrifying and like as in like okay, first of all, Michael B. Jordan freaking ripped like absolutely my god. But if you notice, it looks like he he dropped some mass from Black Panther because Black Maybe Panther bit, he yeah. he was. He was still ripped in Black Panther, but he was imposingly big. That's true. In Creed 2, like, he's more ripped than he is sizable, which, sure. which is why I really appreciated the line from Ivan who's like, your father was bigger. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I, I like that. That was cool. Yeah. That was cool. Like, that, <laughs> that was, that was, that was cool. Um, the montage, what'd you think of that? Oh, it was fantastic. You yeah. can't do a Rocky movie without having a oh, montage. Yeah. I love the location of it. Let's, let's be a little vague about it, but I like the location of the montage. I thought it was it was like, it was very opposite of Rocky Four's montage right? location. So yes, yep. I appreciated that. Yep. I liked uh, the the training sequence he did with the uh, other other boxer at that location. I thought that was a lot of fun. Yep. But yeah, that, uh, the training montage is fantastic. Oh, absolutely. And I also like how it. I, I feel like in the net, if they do make a next Creed, mm-hmm. and I, I'm sure that they will. Yeah. I feel like that Sylvester Stallone will either not be a part of it or be very small part of it because you know he has that line at the end of it where after the final match and he's like you know this is your story that's now. right and i and i kind of maybe i'm looking into it a little bit much mm-hmm. but also part of me is like oh, maybe man maybe I this really happy if that's the case i would like, too and because I, I really think that rocky's had his moment mm-hmm. and it's now for him to take the mantle just mm-hmm. on his own. So, and that would be a great like send off for Rocky. I agree. Like, cause th- when watching Creed, the first one, like the whole time I'm thinking like Rocky's going to die in this movie <laughs> right, right. Like, and it's going to be a big thing. Like at this point, I don't need him to, I don't need him to be Mickey right. or anything. I, or Apollo. I just, I just, it would be great to just see him, you know, fade out. Right. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I liked it a lot. And I also liked how it ended with Ivan and Victor. Yeah, yep. So I, I, I was really happy, I was really happy by that. Yep. So. Absolutely. Um, yeah, good movie. I'm, I'm just so, so happy for Michael B. Jordan because I just, I love him as an actor. Oh, he's fantastic. Um, I just, I can't wait to see what he does next. I'm sad that he, his Killmonger character won't be coming back. Yeah. I, I, I really, I really enjoyed Killmonger, yeah. but man, he was so great in that. He was. So, I mean, it's just, no, he's, he's, uh, he's great. I can't wait to see what else he does. Same here. Um, all right. So that's Creed two. And I'm going to round us out for potpourri. Uh, this will be brief. Cause I don't have a lot to say about it. I saw it today. Um, instant family, uh, with, uh, Mark Wahlberg, Marky Mark. Yep. And Rose Byrne, uh, the plot description according to IMDb is when Pete and Ellie decide to start a family, they stumble into the world of foster care adoption. They hope to take in one small child, but when they meet three siblings, including a rebellious 15 year old girl, they find themselves speeding from zero to three kids overnight. Now Pete and Ellie must try to learn the ropes of instant parenthood in the hope of becoming a family. Aww. It's exactly what you would expect. It's a schmaltzy. It's probably not bad. It's not. It's yeah. like it delivers. It, like if you see the trailers for it, it delivers exactly what is what is sure. offered up. Like nothing more, nothing less. Like if you go in expecting, like, oh, this will be a cute family comedy with some heartwarming kind of things and some light drama mixed in there, like you're going to be satisfied. Right. It's not a waste of time. Like when I, when I rate stuff on letterboxd, I kind of have like a, it's a out of five stars and we can do half stars. So like two and a half stars or lower, it's like, I didn't like the movie, right. but like three stars is like my dividing point where like I can appreciate the movie. Cause like you can like movies too. So you could put a little heart next to it. So three movie, three stars, no heart means 
I appreciate the movie. It's maybe I didn't really like it that much, but I appreciated it and everything. Mm, that's good. Yeah, three stars and a heart means I liked it. Uh, this was a three star movie. Uh, three stars, no heart, because I just didn't really like it. You, you know, you're also not its target audience. True, true. I so, will say, uh, Isabella Molin is that the 15 year old? The 15 year old, amazing performance. Yeah. Like she was, she was fantastic. Um, she and she's gonna be Dora in the live action Dora. The <laughs> oh movie. no, that's funny. Yeah, but um, like the whole time I'm watching, I'm like, she has so much range because she's like this 15 year old girl who's been through the foster system with her siblings, where she has to take care of her siblings and raise her siblings and everything, and she has these complex like feelings toward the family that's adopted or that's fostering them where she, like she wants to like let them in, but she's hardened from being in foster care and sure. everything. So it's like, she's acting out and she's rebellious. She's also a teenager. So just by nature, she's rebellious <laughs> and a dick. Teenagers and, are dicks. And that's the thing. She is a total dick to them, but she like does it like the performance is done in such an empath empathetic way that it's just like you you really get a lot of uh, sympathy for her. it's a Isabella Moner um and also one thing that kind of just surprised me i guess uh, it shouldn't have surprised me uh but like she was born in 2001 and i was like wow i'm old but Ugh. but yeah i know that you don't yeah, yeah. can you believe yeah. that it's almost <laughs> december <laughs> um but no, uh, yeah. So I mean, the movie was perfectly serviceable. Um, one of my favorite types of movies, uh, well, not types of movies, but one of my favorite movie tropes and everything is the uh, surprise courtroom drama, which I've referenced on the podcast uh, <laughs> like way back in the past. Um, it's where like a movie is a conventional movie, and then like the last like actor involves a courtroom in some way. <laughs> Must love Big Daddy. Yeah, like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like Big Daddy accepted. Um, Instant Family is the same way. Um, so yeah, I appreciate that. The director is Sean Anders, who did, oh my God, he directed That's My Boy. Jesus Christ. Which, oh, is that the Am Sandler one? Yeah, with oh, Andy Samberg. I never and saw it. It's but. terrible. Um, he also directed both of the Daddy's Home movies. And one of my favorite, like, underrated, uh, raunchy comedies, uh, Sex Drive. He wrote Sex Drive. Um, was that the one with uh, Seth Rogen or not Seth Rogen, but Seth Green as the Amish kid? Yeah, yeah. I I did enjoy Sex Drive. Uh, I, I like it's not great. It's really not, but it's funny. Oh yeah, it's it's. In it's fact, Seth Green movie. was probably one of my the standout parts of that. The sarcastic oh, Amish absolutely. person. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. So anyway, Instant Family is good. I do want to mention uh, when we saw the trailers for it, I, Kirsten. Uh, had a joke that I really appreciated. Um, she, when it said instant family, she said like, I wish the tagline was just add water. Um, cause instant family. I get it. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that's, that's a good one. Um, you would love that joke. Yeah. So anyway, that's instant family. It's fine. It was funny. Cause like earlier today it was snowing and like I was at work and I was looking out the window. I was like, like I had such a, like profound sense of nostalgia when I looked outside and saw like like fairly heavy like snow flurries. Well, me and you had a complete opposite reactions well, to that. That's the thing. It's not like I was like I didn't like look out the window and be like wistful for like like Christmas and in the holiday season. I was like I felt nostalgic for the time of because my tradition each year pretty much is like in the last weeks of the year I cram in as many of the movies of the year so I can have a more well rounded uh top ten list. So like it's like every movie I see to until New Year's New Year's Day is like a movie that could potentially be on my top ten list. And so like I was sitting there thinking like just the weather and everything just made me think like ah oh, that it makes me think of this time. That's to see such good movies. Yeah. And then, and like, and that's the thing. And, and I saw Instant Family. <laughs> You're also about to start seeing a bunch of Oscar bait. Exactly. Yep. Like, I, I was going to see, I, I like, I tweeted the, like, me earlier today, like, oh, I can't wait to watch all these movies and everything. They could potentially be in my top 10. And then me, uh, after work, I could see Boy Erased. I could see Green Book. I could see Bohemian Rhapsody. I could see, 
Um, uh, oh, what was the other one I was thinking about? Oh, the front runner and everything. No, 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 no. I'm going to see instant family. <laughs> um, but yeah, but it was fine. It was, well, if you're in the mood for it, it's not going to disappoint. That's fair. Yep. And, uh, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Um, hopefully we didn't go too long. Did we? I don't know. Okay? I'll get home. I just, Oh, no, sorry. we're fine. Okay, good. Um, yeah. So anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. Once again, go to patreon.com slash obsessive viewer, uh, pledge a dollar a month. You can get access to a special RSS feed for, uh, exclusive content from us. Um, thank you once again, Fekus, for, for coming on. Thanks for making yes. me a, say, what is it? Recurring, again? recurring co-host. co-host. <laughs> yes. Of course. Of course. It was funny. Oh, yeah. I meant to mention this at the start of the episode, but, um, I, I mentioned this with Kirsten, but I've been re-listening to the podcast from like the beginning, uh, because I'm vain and full sure, of myself. Yeah. Um, really it's, it is for a project that I'm doing, a, a thing that I'm doing for anyway. Um, and I do want to mention that you are first mentioned on the podcast as early as episode 11. Really? Really. What What was the context? Uh, I have this fucking asshole. Context. Yeah, no, no. right? Um, <laughs> no, well, we were talking, um, we were talking about the amazing Spider-Man and I said, uh, like Mike said something. Oh, we were talking about, um, uh, what was it? Um, Toby Maguire versus Andrew Garfield uh-huh. as, as Peter Parker and Spider-Man. And like we were talking about it and then I brought up an anecdote. I was like, you know, uh, like a year or two ago when I was in Vegas, uh, my friend Robert, I refer to you as Robert. Yeah, it's, it's not Fekas. It's weird. Um, uh, he like, I asked him about, um, Andrew Garfield and everything. And like, I remember that he, you made the point that like, uh, Andrew Garfield has a very, um, Oh, how did you phrase it? Like, um, oh, wow. Um, what is the like clothing line? Like American Abercrombie. Abercrombie. Uh, like kind of an Abercrombie model kind of look a little bit. Or you had some like, you, you said that he looked too pretty to be Peter Parker. Um, so yeah. No. Oh, and that was on okay. The fair enough. Episode 11. So this is, this is like me grilling you. Like, do you still feel that way? <laughs> 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 two thousand twelve. I, I stand by my. Yes. I stand by that. In summer two thousand twelve, at Planet Hollywood <laughs> in Vegas, right by the fountain. Is there a fountain? In Planet Hollywood? There is a fountain in the Planet Hollywood Mile, uh, uh, Miracle Mile Mall area. Okay. It's inside. Okay, because weirdly enough, like I remember like where we were, and I think that that's where we were. Wow, that is really yeah. specific. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. You were wearing like a brown. Yeah, like, stop I have it. No idea. <laughs> but yeah. So anyway, that, that's that's all right, all. fair yeah. enough. All right. Yep. All right. Well, that'll do it. Uh, once again, Patreon, all that stuff. Um, thank you to Mike for creating the new uh, pre-recorded outro. Um, and where I'm also playing with some of his music to, as outro music and everything. So thank you so much, Mike at I am Mike White for, uh, supplying that. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what we're going to do next week. Tiny still has, he, Tiny has another skin infection kind of thing. Oh, that's yeah. not fun. Oh yeah. No, it really isn't. It sucks for him. So I don't know. Uh, I was kind of thinking, I'd, uh, we'd review the Christmas Chronicles. I want to watch it. I, I do too. Tiny saw it and said that it's, it's pretty good. I'm anti Christmas until December 1st. Oh, really? Yeah, I will not acknowledge Christmas until December. Interesting. Wow. Well, fortunately, it's so close. Can you believe that it's almost. <laughs> All right. That's enough. I'm going home. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. And now, here's a short clip from our Patreon-exclusive RSS feed. To hear the full clip and more exclusive Patreon content, go to patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer and become a patron at the minimum rate of $1 per month. Thank you and enjoy. And one of the big things, too, is uh, so much, so many interpretations of police and media is just there's always a corrupt cop and it's just yeah i'm i don't need i don't want to see that that's I'm, why I'm tired of seeing yeah. that nonsense that's why so. you haven't or probably will never watch the shield yeah i i will such a shame i'll never watch it so it's yeah how about uh cops did you ever watch that as a kid i hate cops really 
Oh, uh, well. I'm, I'm going to isolate. Right, right. I hate cops. Robert Ficus, I hate cops. Well, you know, <laughs> my parents watched cops when I was a kid, and yeah, I watched it. But... The Obsessive Viewer podcast is edited and produced by Matt Hurt and presented by ObsessiveViewer.com. For a full archive of our episodes, go to ObsessiveViewer.com slash OV archive. You can also like our Facebook page and join the OV Facebook group at Facebook.com slash The Obsessive Viewer. And follow us on Twitter at Obsessive Viewer and at Obsessive Tiny. And follow our recurring co-hosts at I am Mike White, that's me, at R.A. Fekis and at Burger underscore Lurker. If you enjoy the show, please take a couple minutes to leave us a rating and a quick review on Apple Podcasts. This is the easiest way to support what we do, and all it costs is a little bit of your time. If you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can make a PayPal donation at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate, or support us on Patreon for recurring donations and access to commentary tracks and B-roll audio recorded exclusively for patrons at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer. Every donation goes toward paying the fees to keep the podcast running and is greatly appreciated. For official Obsessive Viewer merch, including shirts, mugs, phone cases, and more, visit our Tee Public store. You can find a link to the store in the show notes of this episode and at obsessiveviewer.com slash donate. Or you can simply search for Obsessive Viewer at teepublic.com, T-E-E, public.com. For information about our annual live event showcasing short horror films from local filmmakers, check out shocktoberinirvington.com. And for an archive of all our events, as well as news about potential future events, head over to obsessiveviewer.com slash live. For more podcast content, you can find Anthology, Matt's solo podcast covering The Twilight Zone, and other classic and contemporary science fiction anthology TV shows at anthologypod.com and on Twitter at OV Anthology Pod. You can also find Tower Junkies, a podcast where Matt and Tiny share their love of all things Stephen King and his magnum opus, The Dark Tower Series, at TowerJunkiesPod.com and at TowerJunkiesPod on Twitter. And finally, check out The Secular Perspective, Tiny's side project podcast, which tackles current events and life's big questions from the perspective of secular hosts Chad and Amanda, at thesecularperspective.com. The theme music for The Obsessive Viewer comes courtesy of the band Loud Like from their EP, Mistakes We Must Make. Additional bumper music is provided courtesy of As Good As It Gets, which can be found at facebook.com slash asgoodasitgetsband. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Kitty!